Hey, what's going on you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch and we're back. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the channel. In the past week, we've more than doubled in size. And now we're up to 50,000 channel views. Can't thank you guys enough. It's been absolutely crazy. The Discord's been absolutely popping off. We're up to 200 members now and I can't thank you guys enough. It's an absolutely great community, so I encourage you all to come and hang out with us. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's such an easy thing to do, but it really helps the channel grow, and it, honestly, it really does mean the world to me. Every day, I'm seeing that more and more of you guys are finally getting your Flipper Zeros delivered, and I know you're super psyched to get into using them. So I reached out to the Discord and asked them what they want to see, and what they asked for is something you can do right out of the box, and that's going to be sub gigahertz and IR remote controls. So I'm going to start off with a disclaimer. I know you saw it already in the beginning of this video, but it's very important. Don't be a skid. Don't harass your teachers. Don't terrorize your parents. Only test your own equipment. All right, now that that's over with, we're going to learn today how to use the Flipper Zero to control some of the devices that I'm sure you have kicking around your house. I'm sure you've seen tons of videos on YouTube and TikTok showing people using the Flipper Zero as a remote control. Well, today I'm going to show you how. First thing we're gonna check out is gonna be the sub gigahertz remote control. I've got this outdoor outlet that's controllable by a sub gigahertz remote, and we're gonna be able to turn it on and turn it off using the Flipper Zero. So with a little bit of movie magic, I've got my light set up, and this is what the remote looks like. Simple on and off button, Let's see if we can, yep, yep, there we go. Simple on and off button with some timers and stuff on there. Uh, we're really only concerned about the on and off buttons, and you can see right now, on, off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up a little Q-Flipper window right there, and you can follow along with me. First of all, I'm just gonna hop right into the sub gigahertz uh, application here, and we're gonna go down to frequency analyzer because we need to know what frequency we're really listening for when we're trying to receive the codes. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the on button and see what pops up here. I'll hold it for a second to see kind of where it settles. And it's 433.8 or so, 433.9. So we'll go back to here, and then we'll go to read, change our configuration to 433.9. Now, I've really never gotten this to work with uh, the remotes that I have. I've definitely seen people with garage door remotes make this work. However, when I try to use this, it doesn't really show anything on it. So I'm um, not really sure why this part doesn't work, but we're gonna use the detect raw feature. If we go back one more time to detect raw, we can easily go and receive the signal from our remote. So I'll hit the record button, and as soon as I hit the record button, I'll press the on button of our light. Perfect. Now you can see in the little tiny chart there that we've received a signal from it. So I can go ahead and turn off the light behind me. I can go ahead and press the send button, and it'll turn our light on. Bam. I can also save this for later as whatever we want. Let's name this simply on, O, N, save. So now this is saved. I can simply go back into our saved remotes. And then obviously I have a ton of stuff in here, but this is the on save that we had before. Send. And we're back on. Off. So that's really the easiest way to use a sub gigahertz controller. Um, is using the raw function of it. It works for pretty much everything. It's super simple, and if you wanna, you know, quick and dirty, hop in and copy your remote, easiest way to do it for the sub gigahertz. Now that we've learned how to control sub gigahertz remotes, I'm gonna show you how to do the IR remotes. This application has been updated, and it's super, super cool, extremely easy to use. So if you're looking to, you know, may actually make a fully functioning remote, you totally can with the IR remote function. So we'll hop back into infrared. And first of all, you have the universal remote, which some people think is really the only remote that Flipper has, but it's super limited because what it actually is is a, a brute forcer. So it goes through and it runs dozens and dozens of IR codes for, for say, the, uh, the power button. So let's go to TVs. So right now, and I can, I'll rotate that. Whoop. We have the power button, the mute button, and uh, the volume buttons. So basically, if I use this control, so say for the power, 
what it's doing is it's sending a ton of codes to try to turn off any TV. This works great if, you know, you're trying to control a TV that you don't know the codes for, you don't have the codes for, you don't have a remote for. However, you can see how long this takes. This is still brute forcing the power button. This is still sending more and more codes to the TV to try to turn it off. If you're trying to actually control a TV that you have, you know, that you use every day, this is super impractical. Plus, there's only a few commands you can use on it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. We're going to go back. We're going to go back again. And then we're going to go to learn new remote. So as you can see behind me, I've always had these cool LED colored lights. And obviously, it's got a remote. What's cool about the remote is that it's got a little IR on the tip of it. So if we press a button on the IR remote, whoop, my, <laughs> I already saw it. Back, exit. That wasn't supposed to happen, but that's fine. If I press one of the buttons on it, it actually works and it will receive um, the information from it. So we're gonna go to learn new remote. So right now, you can see on the screen, this, this just says to press the buttons on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button. You're gonna wanna aim the little laser at the end of it at the little black part of the screen right there. And then should be really easy to receive. Boom, it sees it. We're gonna go ahead and we can go send. So we can actually try to make sure they work. So. Off. Again. On. Cool. What it makes is really cool is that we can actually save it from here and start to build a remote. So we're going to go ahead and go to save, and that's going to be power. E -O -W -E -I -O. Save. And now we've created a new remote. So here's my remote. It has one button, power, because that's all we've added so far. However, we can press the little plus button right here, and it's going to add another button. So what we're going to do is say, we're going to switch this over so that this is red. I'm going to press the red button on my remote right here. Boop, boop. And it sees it. So now we have a red color. We're going to go ahead and save it. And we're going to call this red. And save. So now our remote has power and it has red. Go ahead and add one more. We're going to go ahead and press this cool, uh, let's go with this cool purple color down here. It doesn't really matter. Boom. And we're gonna go ahead and save that as purple. Took long enough. So now we've got a few things that we can do. So let's go ahead and change our color of the LEDs to red. Oh, one thing to note, which is one of the things that people do a lot incorrectly, you want it, you keep trying to hold it like this, but you'll notice that that's kind of off. It's not exactly straight. So if I point this straight at something, I'm actually shooting the IR this way, you want to angle it off to the side. You've seen me make that mistake already a couple times. Um, just something to keep in mind, because again, it's if you're far away from something, um, you definitely want to turn it so that the IR is actually facing it. So we can go ahead and turn them purple. We can turn it on, and we can turn it off. So super simple, super easy, and you can see how useful this tool is just for creating remotes. I know you can go to Walmart and buy a universal remote for $12, which, I mean, if all you're doing is using it to use an IR remote, yeah, definitely buy one of those, but there's so much more capability in the Flipper Zero than what you can do with, you know, a universal remote you bought at Walmart. So there you have it. Super quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the sub gigahertz and the IR remote control features, but hopefully you guys found it useful. For any of you who haven't seen my first video on got a Flipper Zero, become a hacker now, I show you how to download all of the files that you'll need for the individual IR remotes from Uber Guido's repository. By the way, congratulations to Uber Guido's for winning a Hack 5 award for his bad USB script, The Rick Roll. Also, big congratulations to I Am Jacoby for taking home Hack 5's payload of the year by a landslide. He is an absolute legend, big supporter of the channel, and we're all super, super happy for you, Jacoby. Well done. If you've made it this far, I want to personally thank you for watching and supporting my content. You can see in the background here, I've actually got some AI generated art that you guys in the community have made in our new AI art channel. Thank you so much, Clara Crazy, for letting us use her AI bot. We've been having a ton of fun with it. It's really amazing the kind of things you guys are cranking out. You've basically created a template for what my merch could look like. I've got Funko Pops. I've got retro futuristic cyberpunk, all sorts of cool Sasquatches, all sorts of cool art. 
So if you want to see your AI generated art featured in a video, hop on down to the Discord and jump into the AI image generation channel and show us what you got. As always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Every one of you guys counts, and it really makes it all the motivation that I need to keep making more and more content for you. Definitely, please make sure to join to the Discord. It's a growing community and it's the easiest and the best way for you to get a hold of me to suggest some new content, to suggest some videos for a further reaction video I want to do. Plus, it's just a really cool place to hang out. There's a ton of cool stuff to do. We've got a counting channel, which is an absolute mess, which is honestly one of the most fun places right now. Um, the image generation channels, we've got a ton of fun stuff to do. You can even drop your own GIFs and I will use them in a future video. So again, thank you so much everybody and we'll catch you next time.